Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode. Today's gonna be an in-depth video all about drip irrigation and the things that I would change looking back on how I set up my irrigation system over three years ago. So we're gonna talk about drip tape, polyline, emitter line, setting up your system for your main timer, your filters, manifolds, all of that stuff will be in this video. So first, let's go take a look at my irrigation main station, at my timers, my filter, and how I'm routing everything. Okay, so this is where I route all of my water from the main. So I'm pulling the water from a faucet right over there um, from the main house. I ran three quarter inch PVC um, up until here. It goes down in some different manifolds and different timers. So let's talk about this. So the whole purpose of setting it up like this initially was I wanted to be able to run my Boogie Brew filter through my drip irrigation system. And I did that for the majority of the time that I was on this plot, and I eventually changed it. So let me explain why, and why your water pressure and flow rate is so important. One big issue with the irrigation on this property is that the house main is the only main. There's no irrigation main like some houses have. So I actually had to pull the water off a faucet over here. And what I think is happening is that the water's flowing through the entire house, through all the different pipes and fittings, and then coming out through there, then coming here, I ran it under the ground. So I'm losing a ton of flow rate. If you wanna learn how to measure your flow rate and pressure, um, check out the video link right here. It's a past video that I've actually done all about how you can check your flow rate and um, figure out how much drip tape and how much pressure, how many valves and all that that you'll need. So anyways, the flow rate for this property is horrible. Um, so over time I noticed that when I was running through the filter, as the filter slowly got clogged, the pressure, I'd get less and less pressure over time. And it was something that I really couldn't avoid on this property. So that is one thing that I would change or one thing that you should keep in mind. Be as close to the main as possible with the least amount of bends and fittings along the way. And that'll keep your flow rate up. If I do this in the future, I'm just gonna build these manifolds out just with PVC. It's way cheaper and way more reliable. Sometimes these would break, these fittings would fail, things like that. Um, it has worked pretty well for splitting the water off. So it comes down here, it has to go through two timers just because the filter can't be under pressure. Now for the timers that I'm using, I'm using an Orbit one valve and an Orbit this four valve. The four valve is my, my favorite that I've used. I like it because these valves have been very reliable. They've never had an issue ever. Uh, if there ever is an issue, you can replace each electronic valve, which is really cool. The batteries last forever in these orbits. These are the original ones I've had at my farm for over three years. Um, I'll put links in the description to all the different pieces that I'm using, and also for Drip Depot, which is the best um, place to buy your drip irrigation. When you buy through my links, it's a way that you can help support the channel at no cost to you and just get the best stuff that you could possibly get. So then coming off of all of this, I've got these other hoses too. This hose goes all the way to my other irrigation system. This hose goes to my overhead sprinkler. I've set this up in a myriad of different ways over the years when I had a different garden and different things going on. One more recommendation I'd like to recommend if you're gonna build a timing station like this, think about how high it's gonna to need to be off the ground for where you'd like to use it. So maybe you don't wanna to have to kneel down and you just wanna stand up, well, then you'd put it a little bit higher. All right, so all the water for the entire farm, no matter if it's my neighbor's yard or the grapevines or the actual market garden plots, the whole water's coming out of this. So now let's go check out the polyline setup that I did originally, some adaptations that I've done and changes that I've made over time, and how I'd recommend setting up a, a flow through system if you were gonna do it. So from the irrigation timers, I'm running half inch polyline out to my entire bed system out here. Now, half inch poly for my market plot um, was a good diameter. I could have done three quarter inch and also been fine. It's just slightly more expensive for those fittings and the line itself. So I recommend not doing more than about 500 square feet of bed space off of uh, one half inch main line. Now that's using four drip tapes per bed. Um, so it's, it's going to vary obviously depending on your flow rate and, and all of that going on. But that's just a good rough number I can give you. And I'll put a link down in the description for Drip Depot. They have a pressure calculator. You can give it the, your pressure, your flow rate, and then you tell it, I think, how many square feet of bed space you want and all the parameters, and it'll spit out what you're gonna need 
uh, to do. So like I said, I built this irrigation completely flow through and it was the first time I ever did that. I wanted to experiment with, with utilizing that system and seeing if it's uh, any different or has some advantages. So what that is, if you don't know, it means that the water enters from this side and the opposite side. So water comes from both ends so that just in case, if there's a clog somewhere on the line, let's say there's a clog right here, the water can't get, get it to, from this side, but it can come from the other side. So it kind of negates clogs um, and it can help have more even pressure over your whole system. Now I've upgraded how you do a flow through system and I think that this is a much better system because you're using less pipe, you're gonna lose less pressure and flow rate. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to take off, especially if you want to make a manifold like this. So let's take a look at the new manifold design, which is a lot easier. Okay, so here's the upgraded manifold design that I'm gonna put, a, I'll put a link to the video if you guys want to learn how to build this. So the advantage of doing this is that I have an on and off for each and every bed. Now the difference on this manifold is that I've added twist on and off connectors here so that you can take it off in one connection. On the old design over there, you had to take off each individual drip tape on both sides, so eight connections. I've boiled it down to now one connection. This also makes it easier to take on and off by, itself, by yourself. Now the second way that this is improved, this is still flow through, but I'm not running half inch to the other side. What I'm running here is just a little header bar at the end of the drip tape section here. So, water can enter through the drip tape, go through the header, back down through the other side. So it'll give it the same effective flow through, but uses far less pipe, and you're gonna maintain pressure and flow rate. So this is the design I recommend making if you wanna do this type of um, manifold-based uh, system with flow rate. Now you could also do this setup like Steadfast Farm style, they run their one inch line, they're a much bigger farm, and they'll go across the entire 100 foot, 300 foot section of that block, and then they run uh, on and off valves just coming out directly out of that for each bed all the way down. You could add a header to the end of that um, and make it flow through, um, still using that style system, or you could run the header across the other side, um, and that would be the other way to do it. So one more change I think I might make the next time I build a drip system is to use twist on and off connections at every point. They're slightly more expensive, but if you ever need to move something or adjust something, you wanna take apart your whole system. You know, I'm moving now, so this is, it's making it a little bit more difficult to move things or to reuse things. So um, compare and contrast the cost for yourself, but having twist off connections, I think is a real good uh, thing to do where it makes sense. So one of my irrigation systems that I don't think I really would change is this grow bag setup. And you can see how I built this on a, a video right here. But essentially it's just half inch and then quarter inch line I punched in. I wrap it around the plant, use an irrigation tee, and put it down, and it works fantastically. Uh, so I can definitely recommend something like this and it's very cheap to build it. So besides my drip irrigation, I also use an overhead sprinkler. I just use that for uh, keeping the top kind of quarter half inch moist when I'm direct seeding or in the summer when I want to cool crops down when it's on a really hot day. I'll just spray that out for a, a minute or two just to get the leaves wet to get some of that evaporative cooling effect to, you know, prevent lettuce from bolting or tasting bitter. All right, that's going to be it for this little episode all about irrigation. I hope those couple tips about things I think I could improve next time really help you out if you're building a system right now. And if you're building your own system, I highly recommend getting everything from Drip Depot and I have a link down in the description that you can click through. Um, I've been buying for them for like four years and um, I've never been dissatisfied with their quality of their service and then the prices are excellent too. So um, definitely go through them if, if uh, you're looking to buy a new system. I'll put links in the description to all the different uh, products and things that I mentioned so it's easier for you guys to find. Definitely check out my other videos on irrigation as I think they'll help you set up pretty effective and um, highly controllable drip systems. Uh, please be sure to like, subscribe, share this video with your friends if you think it'll help them.